Welcome everyone to our first post-qualifying episode. And in this episode, we're gonna cover the very first comparison between AWS AI and R-Square Racing AI on the post-qualifying results. We're also gonna cover the race predictions with our updated model now that we have the qualifying results. And finally, we're gonna talk about the battle for the third place constructors and how AI predicts that's going to turn out. My name's Eric, this is R-Square Racing. Let's get right to it. Qualifying is officially over, and this is our very first post-qualifying episode, so let's jump right to it. We've said it before, we'll say it again. It's not like you need AI to predict that Mercedes will take the first row in uh, qualifying, and certainly, surely enough, without a doubt, it happened. And if you're looking at our AI model and our AI predictions, it looks very good if you look at the top three that we managed to get exactly right from the get-go where AWS actually fell short. And we'll show that to you in a second, but I'll start also telling you that as soon as you start looking past the top five, everything starts taking a turn for dramatically for the worse in our model. So if we look into the qualifying review here, you'll see in the center column, we have the r square predictions versus the AWS latest predictions because it does seem like they changed it quite a little bit, but we did pull the screenshot from FP3, which I believe was the most recent. And if we put a comparison, you'll see that we get the perfect call on four out of five in the top five, with the exception of Leclerc, which was just sh such a shame because I was hoping that Ferrari would be able to bring back something for this qualifying and they didn't. But that said, if you look at both models side to side, you'll see that AWS does seem to get the point in this qualifying because as much as they got wrong in the positions, they are measuring qualifying gap and they do seem to be very close to the qualifying gaps. You see that they were only off by one or two positions where once we go past our top five, we were off by several positions on our model. So there's certainly a lot that can be done there. I will do one note that what AWS does primarily, they have a ton of data and Formula One is supplying data as far as presume presumptive fuel loads and air track temperature, all of these other components that we don't have, but the core component of what they're doing is based on delta time, which is the difference between the FP3 times and what they're looking at with qualifying times. And to date, we don't do that. We use more of a historical look in terms of all the circuit characteristics, the driver characteristics, and all and the constructor characteristics in its past history to try to make our predictions. So as we're looking to improve, there is a lot of room for us to insert a lot of new things into our model. And we will certainly be doing so, and we can't wait to be Look, putting head to head what we can do with our model against AWS and SageMaker, which is their platform. So looking at that again, we see that there has been a wide variety on ours. AWS gets the point on this one, but we are clinging to the fact that we got the top three correctly. If we switch back now to AI predictions, let's talk about our second big point, which is our race predictions. Now, these numbers have been updated post-qualifying, and these predictions are with the qualifying position in mind. So considering what we have, it doesn't change. Mercedes is, as always, predicted to take the first two spots, and Verstappen will be there for the third spot, assuming he does not DNF, which our model does not predict that this time around. If you look at it, Perez, Gasly, and Vettel come right behind the top three, which is an interesting one because again, Vettel is in the Ferrari. He's constantly outperformed by Leclerc, except for his last minute mistake two weeks ago in Turkey. If it wasn't for that, Leclerc would still be ahead of Vettel, even on that battle as well. So it is very optimistic that Vettel is gonna be able to do something about this, but his past history, uh, with Red Bull at Bahrain and with Ferrari certainly will have something to say and that's why they're raising battles so high. But again, a big word of warning here, this model right now is at a 29% a confidence level actually. And that means that there is a lot of room for improvement and we still have a lot to develop in our model as this whole project is still very much in its infancy. 
The one bad news I have here is that Sainz, even though he's starting at the end, the model predicts that Sainz will not be able to make a lot of ground in his effort to climb back to a points position. Which brings me to our final topic in our post-qualifying episode, which is where do we stand in the battle for third in the constructors? Now, if we're looking at the AI model alone, then Racing Point is the only team that's in the battle that is actually forecasted to have both of its drivers finish the race. Norris and Ocon are forecasted to DNF. And even though Norris is forecasted to DNF by the slimmest of margins, which I took a look, he is still forecasted to DNF. And if that happens, that will be a crucial blow in the battle for third as Racing Point gets the opportunity to skyrocket past everyone else with two points finishing positions, especially if Perez gets to land his fourth position. My final thoughts on this is that if Paris cannot get a seat for next year, it will prove once and for all, if it even needed proving that Formula One and having a seat in Formula One is certainly not a meritocracy, which is a little bit of a shame to say the least, but I really think that Paris deserves that seat for what it's worth. Hopefully Christian Horner is listening. If not, well, we'll see anyhow. Guys. Once again, thank you everyone for joining. We will see you on the next video. Until then, my name is Eric and this is R Squared Racing.